there's been more interest in this Samsung battery than I was expecting. And after reading about an electric skateboard that bricks the battery management board if the battery cells are disconnected, I wonder if I had just been lucky to have it work after replacing the cells. Would Samsung even do something like that? So I thought a little dive into the battery management board would be nice, but I didn't want to tear apart my one working battery. A little looking and I did find a four parts or not working one on eBay and the listing said battery shows no signs of physical damage. I thought that would give me a BMS board to work with. These are just hard to get apart. As long as I don't do too much damage to the clips, it will snap back together. Just won't look as pretty. I have to say this battery pack looks in very nice shape. Let's see if the cells have any charge. Yes they do. Wow, and all the cells close to the same voltage and not really that low of a voltage. Before I start desoldering anything, I think I'll try it in the vacuum and see if it will charge. Well, after charging a few minutes, let's see what we have. All within a few millivolts of each other. I suspect this might be a fairly decent battery pack. So this will be a great test to see if it survives the cells being removed. All disconnected from the batteries, I'll take a picture of the front and back of the board and get to drawing up a schematic. Here's my shot at a reverse engineered schematic for the BMS board. A couple of caveats before digging into the board. One, all the transistors are shown as in-channel MOSFETs, and I don't think they all are. I only have part numbers for the two power switch transistors. All the other numbers are the SMD package markings. Two, the label names for the most part are a guess, so don't put much weight on the names of the labels when looking at the schematic. Okay, with that said, let's dig in a bit. We have the connector to the vacuum. Red and black the power lines, with red being the positive DC voltage. Yellow and white the communication lines. Basically, the power in and out of the battery goes through here. We have a TVS diode and a couple of series connected capacitors across the power lines. There is an 8 milliohm current sense resistor to measure the current flow through the battery. The signal goes through a bit of a filter circuit and then back to two pins on the controller IC. That brings us to the strangest thing on the board. Now the positive voltage to either charge the batteries or to run the vacuum goes through this device here. It's labeled F1 and I'm sure it's a current and or thermal protection device. I've never seen anything quite like it and that third terminal only adds to the questions. The resistance from the third terminal to the other two is around 20 ohms and it doesn't seem to vary much with temperature. Thermally, this fuse is connected to the power switch transistors and the via field copper areas under them. It kind of looks like some sort of fuse with a 20 ohm power resistor all made together. My question, why? This transistor may just pulse on for a short time, but if it were to short out or just be turned on, there isn't enough heat sink area here to dissipate the 20 plus watts, so something will burn up. Maybe the fuse. Power in and out of the battery cells is controlled with two drain to drain connected in channel power MOSFETs with independent gate control from the main IC. The way this is hooked up makes me think that the main IC has a charge pump to supply gate drive voltages at least 5 volts more than the 25 or 26 volts needed to charge the battery. The cell balancing circuit is comprised of these parts so not much to go wrong here. Depending on how the IC would respond to one of these caps shorting out, might just not balance the cell correctly, or could shut down the entire battery. I think this section here is the power for the main IC. Basically, it runs off the battery cells if there is no voltage on the fuse. There is no connector mounted in this spot, 
but it makes me wonder if this is a programmable BNS controller IC, as all these resistors are populated. The thermistor that is attached to the end cell is right here and goes straight into one pin on the main IC. I think this might be part of the battery voltage monitoring section. Looks like a resistor voltage divider with a switch connected to the positive battery voltage. The communication lines go through a bit of protection circuit, then into the main IC. There are no parts populated on this board for this part of the circuit. Maybe the 12 cell version of this has these parts. And of course, if anyone recognizes what this main IC is, or the package markings on the small MOSFET, I sure would appreciate the info. Time to put it back together and give it a try. I'm going to attach the two main power terminals first, and then I'm soldering the cell balancing terminals. I don't know if the order makes any difference at all. Do a quick check, make sure I didn't short anything out and it looks okay. Then tape the thermosistor to the cell and it's ready to go back together. See if it works. Battery pack works fine. So removing the cells does not cause a failure of the BMS board for this pack. So there really should be no problem replacing the lithium ion cells. But it does have a rather complex BMS board and it's possible almost any defective part on the board could keep the battery pack from turning on. If the vacuum is having short run and or charge times, probably the cells are wearing out. If the vacuum is dead and the voltage check of the cells puts them at 3 volts plus per cell, then it's probably something on the BMS board, or the vacuum itself with a problem. Thank you for watching.